wicked things to those who carry the messages of God and for speaking about them with malice. God says that we are going back to the Old Testament. We will pay for the things that we say. It was Sunday, okay. See, I said Sunday or Monday, y'all. See, he remembers, praise God. Um, what did God speak to you about on Sunday? What did he show you and what did he say to you? He, he, he showed me that, 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 that the flood made these tall buildings fall, collapse. So he said he saw a flood causing these tall buildings to fall. Yep, and God was talking to me. And, and, and he was explaining, explaining what was happening. He was explaining what was happening, but he also gave you some a time frame. What did God tell you? He, he, he said 50 days. He showed me also in the spirit where cars will not work and not just electric cars, but any car that has a computer system in it will not work. He showed me this in the spirit. He showed me that we will have nationwide food shortages, nationwide power outages. Begin to prepare now. This is not a game. I am a seer. I do not operate in the physical realm. I operate in the spiritual realm. The church has an obsession with end time prophetic warnings. I believe these end time prophetic voices are lying to you. And at the same time, they are abusing the gift of prophecy and the office of a prophet. Here's why. First thing that's concerning is the constant outpouring of prophetic words every single day on YouTube about warnings to America or food shortages or slavery returning or the death of prominent past pastors, right? And these things are desensitizing the world to the true gift of prophecy being able to operate and the gift of the spirit being operate being able to operate within the church and for the world to be able to see because the unbeliever and the church can't discern whether or not the gifts of the spirit are real or fake because of their of this outpouring. So what is the true gift of prophecy? So the Strong's Concordance defines it as the gift of communicating and enforcing revealed truth. It deals with divinely empowered foretelling and foretelling. The Bible says in Revelation 19 verses 10 that the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy, meaning that the prophecy or prophecy in itself is supposed to testify or be testifying about Jesus, right? Do the videos that you watch on YouTube relative to these prophetic warnings, do they seem to testify about Jesus, right? Or are they obsessed with the end times, obsessed with conspiracy theories, obsessed with things like that? So what is the purpose of prophecy? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, it says, but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. So when you're watching these individuals, do they sound like they're exhorting you? Do they sound like they're edifying you? Do they sound like they're comforting you? Or are they making you afraid and causing you to become sin conscious? So the second thing that's concerning about these end time prophetic warning people are these prophecies that they're giving are almost always doom and gloom and very Old Testament like, very Elijah, Elisha, a uh, very Old Testament like hellfire and brimstone, right? So you mean to tell me you hear God's voice and the only thing he has to say to his body seems to be, which seems to be exclusively to America is to repent and that danger is coming? Wicked things to those who carry the messages of God and for speaking about them with malice. God says that we are going back to the Old Testament we will pay for the things that we say. From this video with Celestial, she literally says that God is saying that we're going back to the Old Testament. And this is why I think you should mark and avoid her because she's literally going back on God's word. She's literally telling you that God's saying that we're going to go back to the Old Testament, right? So the Hebrew chapter 8 talks about the new covenant and Hebrews 8 verse 6 says that we are under a better covenant under which is under better promises which Jesus is the mediator mediator of that so if she's supposed to be speaking on behalf of Jesus and has Jesus Christ in her about um in her YouTube channel so she's supposed to be speaking on behalf of Jesus Jesus Christ came to die and enacted the new covenant she's effectively trampling on the finished works of christ by saying that god is saying we're going to go back to the old testament it just doesn't add up and then you go to verse 12 and 13 it says for i'll be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds i will remember no more and then it says in that he says a new covenant he has made the first obsolete now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away so effectively god 
through Jesus Christ has made the old covenant obsolete. So why would he be bringing back something that's obsolete? This woman has to be talking out of turn. These prophets who say the same thing as her have to be talking out of turn. They just have to. There's no other way because scripture contradicts what they are saying. So you should mark and avoid them. Those that don't know who you are, please introduce yourself. Oh, I hate that. I know. I'm a prophet. I'm not a pastor. Give me the difference. Okay. A pastor is like a shepherd to God's people. They walk with them. They journey with them. All of that. A prophet is more of a mouthpiece, right? Okay. And so a pastor, if you will, has a pastor's heart. Okay. They're probably a bit more kinder, nicer. <laughs> if they give you information. So right here, she says, a prophet, Tiffany Montgomery says, a prophet, I mean, that a pastor is a little bit more nicer. And then watch what she says. It's going to be very soft as yeah. not to hurt your feelings. By the time the prophet comes, they come to cut, tear down, root out, destroy. Right. And then they a prophet comes to cut, tear down, root up, destroy. These examples that she are give, she's giving sound very Old Testament like. Right. Whereas the scripture I just read to you in First Corinthians 14 says that prophet prophecy is supposed to in, encourage it's supposed to exhort, it's supposed to build up and comfort the body. But she says that she's supposed to cut you. She says that she's supposed to cut and root up and destroy, right? She has a very Old Testament model about what she thinks prophecy is. And most of these prophets do. Most of these individuals that you see on the internet don't have a New Testament understanding of prophecy. They look at prophets and how they operated in the Old Testament. And that gives them their direction on how they are supposed to be in the New Testament, right? Because the New Testament talks about the gift right and it talks about the prophet the ultimate prophet jesus christ because jesus is supposed to be our prophet our high priest and our king so the new testament talks about the office of prophet and talks about prophecy and fulfilling prophecy but you don't see um how prophets are quote unquote walking around and how they are dealing with people right so the examples that she is getting from to say to cut up to root to root up and to cut and to destroy she's looking at an old testament example because oftentimes what happens in the body of christ is that people ha don't if they don't have clear direction or understanding of something in the old in the new testament they'll go back to the old testament and that will they will then draw their conclusions because okay yeah we're in the new testament and this over here talks about jesus but this don't talk about the office of the prophet or show me how a prophet was navigating, but the Old Testament does. So I'm going to go over here. And since it's in the Bible and I'm a Christian, and we read the Bible that I'm going to go in the Old Testament. And I'm going to pull definitions and ideals about what I think prophecy is because God is showing us prophets in the Old Testament. Right. But they don't have a covenantal or a dispensational type of theology to where they're able to divide Old Testament, New Testament, Old Covenant, New Covenant. They smush it all together and put Jesus in the middle of it and say, oh, I love Jesus, but I'm pulling from this side. I'm pulling from that side. And that's what she's effectively doing by saying this. Build and plant afterwards. And so they come with more warning, more judgment, more things of that nature. They come with more warning, more judgment, more things of that nature, right? So she's giving you a key. I the most of these videos, if you type in on YouTube, they say prophetic warnings, right? You type in prophetic warnings right now on YouTube, you'll see hundreds of videos pop up because they she's saying prophets supposed to warn, they're supposed to judge, they're supposed to do all these different things. But I just read to you First Corinthians 14 that says prophecy is supposed to edify the body, it's supposed to comfort the body, it's supposed to build up the body of Christ. It's supposed to exhort the body of Christ. But what she's saying contradicts what the scripture is saying. So who's right, Tiffany or the Bible, right? I personally think from the scriptures, this is she's giving Old Testament analogies and Old Testament examples and not giving you a New Testament understanding of what the gift of prophecy is. So there's a really big difference. And I try to always teach people what the difference is, because if not, if I'm defined as a pastor, you're like, I thought Christians were nice. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you see she kind of makes a mockery of the gift of prophecy because she says the guy was david shans thought she was a pastor and she clarifies it which led her into her definition of what what she thought a prophet was and in her saying that 
and her her saying that she's saying i thought christians were supposed to be nice and she's saying that she's not here to be nice she's here to root up and to destroy and to bring warning and to bring judgment right she has a old testament philosophy about what she thinks new testament prophecy is because she's in the new testament whether she believes it or not you're in the new testament whether you believe it or not right but it's my job and other people's job to say hey body of christ we're under a new covenant right and this is an example of somebody who we're supposed who's under the new covenant but does not know it so is judgment exclusively coming to america another thing that these prophets have in common is that they're all talking about and warning about a coming coming judgment to america right oh america my wrath is stored up for thee nations will rise against thee and my hand will withdraw from thee they're talking about things and the sudden destruction coming upon america for its sins unless it repents right and the thing i always say is that the bible doesn't say that god is coming back for america he's coming back for you and me who live in america he's coming back for you and me who believe on jesus in america but america itself cannot get on its knees and ask God for forgiveness, right? We have this Second Chronicles 714 idea about America, and we say, okay, America has wicked ways. Second Chronicles 714 says, if we humble ourselves and we turn from our wicked ways, that God will heal our land. America repent because God's going to bring judgment, right? But there, while there is judgment coming, while there is a wrath being formed, it's being formed for the individual that does not believe on Jesus. It's not being formed and it's coming to America and to cities in America because God has a remnant here, right? So he, 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 we believe on Jesus in America and those believers are saved and those believers are shielded from that judgment, but there, God is not going to judge America and judge or judge the city of that I'm in, judge the state of North Carolina or the city of Charlotte and say, oh, I'm judging the city of Charlotte, but he got believers here. He's going to send down hellfire and brimstone on the city of Charlotte and destructions and calamities on the city of Charlotte because there's a few you bad apples or because there's a few people that don't believe that sounds like he's dealing with the nation of israel right when in the old testament god dealt with dealt with the people by nation right under the new testament he deals with us by who who believe romans 10 out of 10 talks about whosoever believes on jesus they confess with their mouth and believe believe in the heart that god rose jesus from the dead they will be saved right so if it, that prayer or that example in Romans 10 is giving an example of some of a specific person, right? Because a nation by itself can't one represent us as the body of Christ, but then two uh, rep like get on its knees and ask God for forgiveness, right? America itself can't say, oh God, please forgive me, right? But that's what believers are trying to do, right? So they're prophesying about all this coming judgment to America and I don't believe it because while there is a wrath forming, while there is wrath coming, it's on the on the person who does not repent. America got 16,000 genders and allowing people to uh, represent or identify as a season um, of the year. Wrath is not coming on America because of those things. Wrath is coming on individuals in America, individuals in Asia, individuals in Switzerland, individuals in Russia, individual, individuals in Thailand, Mexico, Canada, who do not believe on Jesus. So another thing that's concerning is that if Jesus said that he isn't coming back to his enemies or made his footstool and that he won't come back until all have heard, which could be any day now or far off, we also don't know the specific days. So why would God write that and then tell you something different and tell you, oh, the calamity is coming in a certain amount of days, April 8th, the eclipse, Jesus is going to come back. Why would God tell you that when he wrote this? Um, what did God speak to you about on sunday what did he show you and what did he say to you he he, he showed me that, that 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 the flood made these tall buildings fall collapse so he said he saw a flood causing these tall buildings to fall yep and god was talking to me he, and, and and he was explaining explain, explaining what was happening he was explaining what was happening but he also gave you 
some a time frame. What did God tell you? He he, he said fifty days. Drew loved the kids, but that kid was wrong, right? It was wrong for that mother to put her son up in there and say that God gave him a prophecy when that prophecy just directly contradict scripture genesis 9 verse 11 says thus i established my covenant with you never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth right so this little boy had a dream that uh, god was going to destroy a city or destroy somewhere you don't know where and you're telling people to fast and pray in this video and he's saying that god saying this flood was gonna come but genesis 9 god says he'll never again bring flood waters to destroy the earth so you're saying god said this he's going to destroy the earth or or destroy his particular city and bring a flood or bring calamity to a particular city in 50 days but yet genesis 9 says he ain't doing that no more so who do I believe? Do I believe my Bible or do I believe this eight year old? I think I believe the Bible. So the demand for this type of content suggests that the church is lusting after prophetic words. The church is lusting after end time prophecies. The church is lusting after things relative to conspiracy theories, right? And they have a large appetite for doom and gloom and destruction prophecies, right? Because why else are these individuals still making the videos every single day if there wasn't demand for it? All of these individuals have hundreds of thousands of subscribers on YouTube and have amassed millions of views right so there's clearly a demand and they keep making videos because there's clearly a demand for this type of content right and this lets me know that the church has a large and in indeed wrong appetite for doom and gloom and destruction i mean look at the thumbnails and the titles on these youtube videos from these very prom prominent youtubers nothing about them says exhortation consolation or edification right unless of course this edification is educating you on things that are negative and don't do anything for your spiritual growth mind you i said earlier they're really making people sin conscious more than anything right they're making them obsess over the end times but they're also making people sin conscious like these channels that produce these prophecies talk about nothing else right i haven't seen one sermon one thing about joy one thing about righteousness one thing about grace and you may say oh well drew they're an end times prophecy blog or they're they just talk, they specifically deal deal with this right if they're saying god says this i personally believe god has more to say than just end time prophecies why is he able to give you an uh, end time prophecy um every single day right i talk about this later but like i'm not a cessationist right i believe that god still speaks today right but is god really giving you these dreams and these visions and these words to say or are you obsessed with prophetic warnings are you obsessed with the end times are you obsessed with conspiracy theories are you obsessed with doom and gloom and destruction in the old testament and disguised behind the obsession you hear the voice of god in this pattern you hear the voice of god in this way you dream dreams and you have visions because this is what you lust after this is what you dream about right i personally think a lot of these individuals don't be having these dreams don't be having these visions don't be having uh these real words from god i personally think they hear god relative to or in this voice that is very old testament like because they do not study the new testament one and then two because they are obsessed with old uh, with end time prophecies and they are obsessed with conspiracy theories it says the fall of jay-z and beyonce idols will shatter in america then it says the future of king future kingdom social structure of the coming beast and then it says a reckoning for sin sudden judgment of death is coming and then it says you see this title in this thumbnail it says the beast is here part one persecution a new society is coming right then it says prophecy unfolding the retiree is still calling the shots right and then it says obama the beast of revelation 13 and then it says the beast system is here part two a, a worldwide test for all right like all of this stuff screams old testament all of this stuff screams um end times uh, and conspiracy theory so you look at hebrews 1 it says god who at various times and in various ways spoken time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son 
whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds. So what these two verses are saying is that in the past, God dealt with the people through the prophets, right? He dealt, he spoke through prophets, priests, kings, people in authority, people he set apart, or a lot of them were prophets, right? He spoke to the fathers through the prophets. But then it says, in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. What does this mean? It means that I have it written out of my Bible. It says, Jesus is God speaking to me, right? When you see Jesus in scripture, when you hear Jesus in scripture, that is God talking to you, right? He is the ultimate prophet. Jesus is the ultimate prophet. So if Jesus is the ultimate prophet, everything that you should be hearing from God, should, Jesus should be the mouthpiece, right? But instead, these people's mouthpieces are the prophets of the Old Testament. But what it really should be is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus should be the mouthpiece that God is speaking through. It should sound like it's coming from Jesus, right? It should involve Jesus, right? But instead, they're still clinging on to these prophets. So here's what I think. I think that these prophets never know when these things are supposed to happen and they just see it. And because they just see it, it effectively lets them off of the hook, right? And because they use the scriptures, oh, because we know in part and we prophesy in part. And they utilize that scripture that we know in part and we prophesy in part to proceed with more and more prophecies because they don't know when they come to pass and it or, or when they're going to come to pass and if they mess up oh we prophesy in part we know in part and they use it as a crutch right but then they keep on heaping you with more top loading you with more and more prophecies to where you forget about the last prophecy that they made three months ago that still hasn't come to pass or had hadn't came to pass right and they get you hooked on the next thing it's like putting a carrot in front of a horse right it's just dangling a carrot in front of the horse because there's a demand and because you are obsessed they, and they are obsessed as well and there's a demand they want more they want to know what god is saying to you what you believe god is saying you can hang your hat on well i prophesy in part i know in part I, I i believe the lord was saying this i believe the lord was saying that and effectively you can hang your hat on that and you can abuse the prophetic and you can abuse prophecies and have a prophecy every single day like i went on one of these cats for youtube pages he has a video every couple of days saying god showed him something I'm like man i read my bible just like that dude do and god don't show me near as much as he show him he showed me stuff in the scriptures but he don't show me near as much stuff he show him if you're supposed to be god's prophet and god's supposed to be talking to you why don't i hear and see the same things that he he's speaking to you about so imagine this president biden he is from among the people he's a born american citizen he's from the people he got voted in by the people right he speaks and represents America, hundred something million Americans on behalf to other nations on behalf of other nations, right? He's an ambassador, if you would, to other nations or a mouthpiece for America. Imagine if God stopped talking to you today and spoke primarily through President Biden. How would you feel if God all of a sudden just today stop talking to you and president biden came on the news and said i got a word from the lord for you americans would you believe him would you be inclined to believe him because you can't say oh if god told me to because god's only speaking to president biden imagine having to hear what god is saying to you through president biden or through a mouthpiece like that right that's effectively what happened in the old testament god spoke to a man or two men on behalf of the people and for the people, right? The people didn't have personal relationships with God, but you and I have a personal relationship with God. So if God has something important to tell us, he wouldn't just tell Troy Black, he wouldn't just tell Celestia, he wouldn't just tell Tiffany Montgomery, he wouldn't just tell God knows who, whatever prophet on here is prophesying some crap. He wouldn't tell just those individuals and say, oh, well, if they don't see it, they don't see it because I told you to say this. He's, these individuals, if they're talking, they're talking to their sphere of influence, but what they're saying is not a complete word from God because God didn't say, hey, Drew, go watch this prophecy. He didn't say, hey, such and such. He didn't tell all these people, all these people don't have hundreds of billions of views from every Christian in America or every Christian in the world. Every Christian in the world is not tuning into these videos. Every Christian in the world will never see half of these people's prophecies. So how could, how could God be the only talking 
to th through them to the people and warning them of all these calamities why would god choose these five or six or ten or hundred individuals to speak to 800 million christians for example why would he choose these hundred people to speak to 800 million christians when each each of the 800 million Christians have the Holy Spirit and they are saved and they are blood bought and he can speak to them himself. So in the end, does this mean that I don't believe in prophets or prophecy? Nope, I still do believe in prophets and prophecy, right? But I believe that they're supposed to actually prophesy and not rant to you about end times or things that we don't know would happen or will happen, right? I believe that they're supposed to encourage, they're supposed to exhort, and they're supposed to comfort or bring consolation to you, the believer. I don't believe that what they're doing currently is prophesying. I believe that they ha they may be giving admonishments. I believe that they may be um, giving words of uh, what they believe is encouragement to of negativity to people but what i believe is that they're not prophesying to you they are they they are obsessed with the end times they're obsessed with giving people prophetic warnings that don't line up with scripture they have bad theology some of these people don't even know uh, the difference between giving in the new covenant and tithing in the old testament right so they if you can't even understand that correctly i'm definitely not going to listen to you because how can you not understand theology relative to this but yet claim to be speaking on behalf of god what we are seeing today is making a mockery of the prophetic is making a mockery of the office of the prophet is making a mockery of prophecy and i believe that the church is lusting after these gifts and they are lusting after these end time prophetic warnings that in the end don't add up to a hill of beans and if i never heard a prophetic warning i would still be safe right I, if i never heard one of these end time prophecies i'd still be good right um that god is not speaking to these select individuals only relative to these things and leaving me out I believe that I am God's building, that God uh, dwells on the inside of me, that I am the temple of the Holy Spirit, and that if these things were really true and these things were really getting ready to happen, God wouldn't just use Celestial, he wouldn't just use Troy Black, he wouldn't just use these individuals, he would speak to all believers directly. <laughs>